I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Now to the hunt for the invasive species that has scientists on high alert. The so-called murder hornets arriving in the United States for the first time and experts are warning they could decimate bee populations across the U.S. Will Reeve is joining us now from Central Park with more on this and Will also concerning they've been known to kill people as well. Yes, Amy, dozens of people per year in Japan, people who have been stung by a murder hornet say it feels like hot metal driving into the skin. The hits keep coming here in 2020. The murder hornet has been spotted in the U.S. Now, as the pandemic keeps people indoors, another potential reason not to go outside in 2020, the so-called murder hornet. The biggest ones will get just to about two inches. Known as the Asian giant hornet, it can be up to five times larger than a honeybee. Its stinger strong enough to pierce through a beekeeping suit. Its venom can be deadly. These hornets kill dozens of people in Japan every year. And now they've been sighted in the U.S. These images taken in December in Washington state. As summer approaches, scientists are racing against the clock to track them down. Ted McFall is a beekeeper near where those first sightings happened. He says the quote beasts decimated his entire honeybee colony. Never have I seen a bee slaughter in the way that this hive had been slaughtered. And these hornets have a vicious sting. Just ask animal expert and YouTube personality Coyote Peterson, who voluntarily got stung by one in 2018 for his show Brave Wilderness. If you can imagine getting yourself into a scenario where somehow Mike Tyson was able to take an open shot right at your jaw, that is kind of what it feels like. Experts say if you encounter one of these large hornets, get as far away from it as you can. Experts also say that most people have nothing to worry about. The murder hornets have been spotted in extreme northwest Washington state and in British Columbia, but there is no evidence that they are anywhere else in North America. Guys? Not yet, at least. Oh, I, no. All right. Will Reeve, thank you so much. I've heard people say with this murder hornet in the heels of the coronavirus pandemic that we're just ready for this Jumanji game to be over with. Yeah, right remember now. when we were excited about 2020, wow. New Year's Eve? Not so much anymore. A massacre in the honeycombs. Well, there were dead bees all over the front of the hive, all over the bottom board. And they all had, had all been chopped to bits. They were decapitated. Beekeeper Ted McFall says he went to check on a hive one morning in November and found an entire colony destroyed. 60,000 honeybees torn apart in a savage attack. About a month later, the alleged attacker was revealed. This Asian giant hornet found in Blaine, Washington, just a couple miles from McFall's property. And all it takes is a couple dozen of the Asian giant hornets to show up and start lopping off heads. Dubbed the murder hornet for its powerful sting and the way it decapitates its prey, this is the first time the world's largest hornet has been seen in the U.S. In its native Asia, Vespa mandarinia is notorious. Seen on programs like Netflix's 72 Dangerous Animals. Washington State entomologist Chris Looney says the clock is ticking. The goal is to eradicate it now while the population is presumably small. If he and his colleagues can't wipe out the invaders this summer, they're likely to multiply and spread across the country with potentially disastrous consequences. They're counting on the public to help trap and track hornets back to their nests. They have a one year life cycle. And so uh, every year we can keep a nest from reproducing, um, then, then we win. The hornets also pose a threat to humans. Adventurer and YouTube personality Coyote Peterson tracked one down in Japan to demonstrate how painful their sting can be. Ah! Searing pain! A few dozen stings can be fatal. Asian giant hornets kill around 30 to 50 people a year. And while Japanese bees have evolved to create self-defense systems, North American bees have no idea how to fight an alien predator like this. Bee Lives Matter experts say not just for honey, but the entire food system. The pollination that um, honey bees do for our food supply cannot be understated. I mean, there's so many fruits and vegetables that are dependent on honeybees. In other words, a threat to the bee is a threat to you and me. For those who are unsaved and remain unrepentant in their sin, there is something far worse than murder hornets coming.
When the fifth trumpet sounds, demonic creatures who have tails like scorpions are given authority to sting and hurt men for five months, as we read in Revelation 9, 1-12. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth had power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads, and they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth, and they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. By looking at the news headlines of our world today, there can be no doubt we are living in the final moments before Jesus' return. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray you do so today, as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. An earthquake emergency in Puerto Rico. A camera capturing the moment a 5.5 magnitude quake hit the southern coast of the island yesterday. A virtual prayer service interrupted by the quake as statues on the small altar shook there. Power was briefly knocked out with at least one second story balcony crashing in the southern city of Ponce. There were no immediate reports of any casualties there. The quake came as Puerto Ricans remain home under a nearly two-month lockdown in order to curb the coronavirus. It appears changes to our planet are now accelerating. The number of earthquakes around the globe continues to rise, and volcanoes are beginning to behave in some unusual ways. We are far more vulnerable to natural disasters than most people realize, and it looks like the shaking of our planet is only going to intensify in the months and years ahead. We were warned by the prophets of old and even Jesus himself, that these things would take place right before his return. There's a whole lot of shaking going on in Utah and Idaho, and it's got people rightfully on edge. Residents in Salt Lake City are fearing the big one. Seismologists say there have been about 1,780 earthquakes since a 5.7 magnitude tembler struck six weeks ago. That quake was centered near the town of Magna, about 15 miles west of Salt Lake City. It caused millions of dollars in damage. 
Scientists say there's about a 1 in 20 chance a larger quake could happen in the next few days. Experts say the area is at risk for a magnitude 7 or 7.5 magnitude quake somewhere along the Wasatch Fault. And in Idaho, there have been hundreds of aftershocks following a 6.5 magnitude quake that struck near Boise on March 31st. Most of them centered around Chalice, Cascade, and Idaho City. Isaiah 24, 19 through 21. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. It shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it will fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones, and on the earth the kings of the earth. A recent swarm of earthquakes, and yes, it is called a swarm of earthquakes, has put new pressure on a California fault line that's been quiet for 500 years. Now scientists are warning the Garlock Fault could produce a quake big enough to be felt all the way from L.A., up to the Bay Area. Claudia Cowan live in our West Coast newsroom with more on exactly what a swarm of earthquakes is. Hi, Claudia. <laughs> Right, Leland, good morning. As if the San Andreas and Hayward faults weren't enough to worry about, now we have the Garlock Fault, which has been pretty quiet for the last 500 years, but is slowly beginning to move and has been linked to, as we said, a swarm of tumblers that hammered Southern California's Mojave Desert last July. The so-called Ridge Quest sequence included a 6.44 shock, followed the next day by a 7.1 earthquake and more than 100,000 aftershocks since then. According to a study out of Caltech, that seismic activity involved ruptures on a web of interconnected faults from the San Andreas Fault to Death Valley, more than two dozen faults, many previously unknown. In total, it's probably almost about 200 miles long. So if this whole fault was to go, it could produce a magnitude 8 earthquake. And Ross says that's big enough to cause damage in the Bay Area and Los Angeles, with longer and more intense shaking that could destabilize other faults long overdue for a catastrophic earthquake. While California Governor Gavin Newsom recently announced an early warning system app that can send an alert within seconds of the ground shaking, there is still no way to predict when or where a quake will strike. Instead, seismologists say every new quake teaches new lessons about the physics of land movement. And the takeaway from this recent round of shaking, the process of an earthquake rupturing other faults is more complicated and happens more frequently than scientists previously thought. And of course, Leland, they add, the big one is still coming. Luke 2111, and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. There are five earthquakes that occur during the seven year tribulation, three of which are called great earthquakes. The largest and final earthquake to ever rattle planet Earth takes place during the last half of the seven year tribulation as we read in Revelation 16, 17 through 20. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Thousands of people across Middle Tennessee are still without power after those same storms. News Channel 5 reporters and photographers captured pictures of power lines and trees down all across the area. Eric Hilt joins us from Donaldson, and Eric, we have heard multiple reports of damage in that area as well. A lot of damage tonight, a lot of street closures as well. As you can see, police blocking Lebanon Pike here behind me. That's because back behind my shoulder, you can see NES crews working on power lines, trying to restore power in this area that has been without power for hours now. There are several spots on Lebanon Pike that are blocked off as crews work to clear debris and work on power lines as trees fell down. We were here earlier as they were cleaning up some of the mess that the storm left behind.
Now, this was the scene right here on Lebanon Pike earlier as crews worked to clean up that mess as a tree fell into the road. There were trees and power lines down across this area. Now, the storm hit Donaldson and Hermitage pretty hard, but there were also damage reports in Antioch, Mount Juliet, Spring Hill, Columbia, really all over the mid-state. And people say the storm was quick but powerful. And for folks here in Donaldson, it hit while the March 3rd tornado is still very fresh on their mind. It was pretty intense. It lasted for about 10 minutes and uh, we uh, we held on for, uh, for <laughs> held on for dear life. This is our second time through. The tornado went about 300 yards behind us. What was that? Four or five, six weeks ago. Yeah. So we've uh, we've <laughs> we've got some pretty uh, interesting luck here. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21. God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21:11, And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. For a self-described wartime president, victory over COVID-19 equals a vaccine. I hope we're gonna have a vaccine and, and we're going to fast track it like you've never seen before. Adding Trump style branding, the administration launched Operation Warp Speed, a multi-billion dollar research and manufacturing effort to shorten the typical year plus vaccine development timeline. The goal is ambitious, producing patient-ready vaccines as early as January, though officials stressed there is no guarantee. Chilling new numbers as nearly half of America prepares to slowly reopen this week. The death toll still soaring. Those numbers a grim reminder of where the country is in this fight. More than 67,000 dead. New York State reporting 280 deaths in 24 hours. Hospitalizations below 10,000 for the first time since March. New York City investigating violent arrests like this one as officers were enforcing social distancing rules. A park ranger in Texas, look at this, shoved into the water, explaining social distancing there. Warm weather drying out crowds this weekend in South Carolina. Several newly reopened parks and some beaches reaching capacity before noon. And with his state reopening, Ohio's governor rescinding his own order requiring customers to wear masks inside stores. ABC's Trevor Ald is in New York to lead us off. Tonight, mounting confusion across the country, and with half of U.S. states now reopening, frustration growing over social distancing. This Texas park ranger trying to break up a crowd at Lake Austin, then shoved in the water. 25-year-old Brandon Hicks now charged with attempted assault on a public servant, a felony. In New York City, plainclothes police officers approaching a group on the street they said were in violation of social distancing orders. The altercation escalating, one officer taking out his stun gun. The NYPD saying the incident is under investigation. Three people taken into custody on multiple charges, including resisting arrest. Across the city, 51 others issued social distancing summons, mostly in parks. Amid these simmering tensions, governors struggling to unify their states as they determine the best path forward. Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves halted plans to reopen on Friday after seeing a single-day record of nearly 400 new cases. It was a one-day blip. 
Uh, but we wanted to make sure we investigate that data before we make a final decision, so we delayed it. But today, the governor saying that spike was the result of a data dump and cases have since receded. We're doing everything in our power to get our, our state back open as soon as possible. While in Ohio, Governor Mike DeWine requiring masks for anyone entering a store, but backing off the order the next day. It became clear to me that that was just a bridge too far, that people were, were not going to accept the government telling them what to do. In Maryland, dozens gathering in a parking lot demanding businesses reopen in a state where cases continue to climb. Sadly, we had far more people die yesterday in Maryland than we had protesters. In Michigan, this week, hundreds spilling into the state capitol, some armed with assault rifles and very few masks. Dr. Deborah Burks calling the trend devastatingly worrisome. If they go home and affect their grandmother or their grandfather, they will feel guilty for the rest of our lives. Our team tracking the changing rules across the country. Colorado has a patchwork of guidelines that change depending on where you live. Here in Douglas County, south of Denver, places like this hair salon are open and busy. And even though some state restrictions have been lifted, some of Colorado's biggest counties and cities say the governor's plan to reopen is too rushed. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis kickstarting a three-phase plan to reopen the state Monday, but it doesn't include three major counties surrounding Miami. For the countless people we have spoken with down here who have been unemployed for more than a month now and have been dealing with Florida's unreliable unemployment system, that is the last news that they want to hear. Hi, welcome back to Santico. Some Texas theaters once again showing movies, but blocking off rows with caution tape and asking customers about their symptoms. If that answer is yes, we're going to politely ask you to come back and refund your money. With many families starting to get back to normal, we remember some families will never be the same. Colorado paramedic Paul Carey volunteered his services in New York only to die from the virus himself. Today, a procession of ambulances honoring his service and sacrifice, escorting him to the airport for his last journey home. A report in the form of a dossier compiled by the Five Eyes says China lied about the COVID-19 outbreak. The Five Eyes are the intelligence services of the U.S., Canada, the U.K., Australia, and New Zealand. They maintain that China deceived the world with, quote, deadly denial of human-to-human -human transmission. I've seen what the intelligence committee has said. I have no reason to believe that they've got it wrong. Collectively, the Five Eyes say China has spread propaganda about the origin of the virus on social media, blaming the United States for the outbreak. Dr. Glenn Dewar is Associate Professor of International Studies at Cedarville University. Maybe it was foreign travelers, maybe it had something to do with U.S. troops. They've given all these kinds of conspiracy theories just to try and simply try and muddy the waters out there to get the focus off of Xi Jinping and the Communist Party. The dossier further states that China refused to hand over COVID-19 viral samples, so a vaccine could be developed. Also, that the virus leaked out from that level four lab in Wuhan. It could have been stopped on the spot. They chose not to do it or something happened. Either there was incompetence or they didn't do it for some reason. The possible reason? A Department of Homeland Security report says China delayed informing the World Health Organization about the viral outbreak so it could stockpile face masks and other critical PPE supplies. Regardless of the reason, a new poll shows a whopping 62% of Americans believe China is a growing problem. And several states, including Missouri, are filing damage claims against China in U.S. federal court. Hudson Institute's Robert Spaulding says the COVID-19 pandemic gives the United States an opportunity to reset the China relationship. What the coronavirus gives us an opportunity to do is really, really reset and isolate uh, democracies from these authoritarian or totalitarian regimes that seek to undermine democracy, undermine free trade, undermine rule of law, undermine human rights and civil liberties, really undermine the entire fabric of the international order. So how can China be held accountable, perhaps even punished for COVID-19? It's difficult when many countries depend on Chinese trade, nearly half a trillion dollars annually for the United States. Appearing on the CBN News Channel program, The Global Lane, China analyst Gordon Chang says the debt can actually be used against China. So we've got to be um, very concerned that uh, this is going to happen again. 
So we need to impose those costs. And we can do that by seizing treasury obligations that you just referred to. We shouldn't do that by ourselves, but we should do it in conjunction with other countries. And um, we should be cutting our trade links with China. Now the United Nations is warning the coronavirus crisis has put the world on the brink of a hunger pandemic. 265 million people could face acute food shortages by the end of the year. That is double last year's projections. CBS's Deborah Pata has more. This is what hunger looks like when it spills over into the streets. A food stampede in Kenya's largest slum, leaving scores injured and two dead. White flags waved by defeated families in Peru, signaling to authorities they've run out of supplies. A mile-long line for food in India, where workers wait in the hot sun. Protests in Lebanon as food prices surge uncontrollably. Even in the richest countries, the virus has left people hungry, but for the world's poor, it means starvation. Like South Africa, where a national lockdown has led to a sudden loss of work and hunger for millions. Food distribution is weighed down by cumbersome bureaucracy. If you're not on the day's list, there is no food. These people are desperate. They are hungry and they are angry. Their biggest fear, if the virus doesn't get them, hunger will. Imduduzi Kamalo has been waiting in line every day for two weeks now. His name is never called. If you are hungry, it's easy to get sick because of stress and everything, yeah. He was working as a delivery man before the national lockdown dried up his income. His four young children used to receive two meals a day at their local school, which is now closed. They know that if I don't get anything for them, it's over. It's a cry echoed across the globe, prompting a dire warning from the United Nations. The world is facing a famine of biblical proportions. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. We are fast approaching a time known as the tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat as we read in Revelation 6, 5 and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep, God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord.
that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine, faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.